everyone thank you for joining us to yet another chapter uh, discussing uh, cloud in amdocs and uh, my name is evely kornik i'm leading cloud technologies within amdocs for the past uh, eight years with me is my honorable guest maxim from zesty the founder who is a company leading finops in within the cloud hi maxim how are you doing hi zevik thank you for uh, for having me today I'm great. Great. Thank you for joining. Uh, so let's start. What is uh, Cloud Finops? What is it all about? So as you know, I would not surprise you if I'll tell you that companies across the board are rushing to adopt the cloud to gain technological advantage. And a cloud provider is constantly updating their offering to support changing demand. And the actual spend on infrastructure, which is today's spend on cloud, became so impactful that enterprises are understand need to take that into control. As you as you consume the cloud as one company, with that being said, you have different business units, you need to have a better ability to understand the allocation of budgets per team, per project. With that, with this challenge, having one cloud with one bill, it's, it's a need. And the second aspect that the FinOps is required is that unlike having a traditional data center that you would buy and maintain and monitor it on the cloud vertical, you have the ability and the opportunity to optimize a lot of your infrastructure, a lot of your workloads, a lot of the things to achieve higher ROI from the cloud provider. Now, sure. the, the goal of the FinOps in my world, in, according to my perspective, is to <coughs> be able to answer questions regarding cloud, the financial question regarding cloud, how much that feature costs, how much that team costs, how much that product costs, what is our efficiency on this part, what is our efficiency on that part, and he can actually orchestrate the financial side of the business with the technological side of the business and be the bridge that unites them. Cool. So you were talking about uh, minimizing or avoiding bill shock, correct? This is one of the elements. Yes. Um, as well as being the bridge between the business folks and the techie folks. Okay. This is okay. how it translates, you know, because I assume. Uh, Many business folks uh, believe that while going to the cloud is immediately reducing TCO. And then sometimes it's not exactly, mainly if you do some lift and shift, and we know that. Uh, but then you are trying to, with cloud FinOps, we are trying still to optimize and reduce costs as much as possible. Great. So within cloud FinOps, I assume that there are various, I don't know, chapters, vertical silos. Okay. Could you explain what are the key uh, verticals within Cloud FinOps, uh, what's going on today in the market, what are the biggest hype, what's working, what's not working? So the, the first challenge that, as far as I know, was, was solved is actually deciphering the bill. Because when you get a cloud bill and you get it for the first time, it's not only that is a large bill, it's also very complicated to read. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of, I would say, ambiguity. So the way to understand the bill and do cost allocation, that challenge based on my knowledge and based on the feedback I get from the field was resolved either by native tools of the cloud providers, which give value or the third party tools who top that value and giving actionable insights and recommendations of what decisions people should take in order to 
reduce their TCO. Cool. With that being said, we do still see a challenge of having some of the recommendations implemented. Okay, so you're starting actually with what you refer to as deciphering the bill, basically understanding what's there, and then you're moving into what to do with it, correct? What's the actions to do with exactly. it? Exactly. And within making it actionable, you're saying, you know, there are various ways, not all of them are smooth and, and so, correct? Exactly. Now, some of the oh. ways would require... So, the, the biggest thing that people should always remember that optimization has a price. If you're optimizing, you're either committing to something which is you're paying a price of, let's call it freedom. Either you are involving te uh, technological staff to perform a task which also has a price, or you have a reduction in performance, which is also has a price. So to grasp on the ROI of each and every action is not simple. I see. And today the FinOps, cloud FinOps solution in the market, are they mostly recommending to do things or actually really doing the things? I mean, is it uh, descriptive or is it like prescriptive if, if, I, if I understood? So you have both. You have companies that are mostly focused on deciphering, recommendations, visualizations, cost allocation. And you have another group that provides the actual automation. I see. Okay. Makes sense. And, and, and if we are still on the understanding the types of cloud FinOps solutions in the market, as far as I know, there are solutions that are helping you with various types of arbitrages, correct? Okay. Either arbitrages between different public cloud providers. I don't know, Amazon in this moment is cheaper than Google or vice versa, uh, or even within the, the types of uh, instances themselves, correct? Like different compute instances, suddenly, you know, you have a, a, a scaled down uh, solution, scaled down instance, you could move it to a smaller uh, instance and reduce cost and, and all things like that, correct? Could you elaborate on that? Please? So the arbitraging between multiple cloud providers is something that I've personally never seen. I know, I heard it exists, but in order to arbitrage between multiple cloud providers, there is a variable that you have to take into account, which is traffic. So, Correct. as I mentioned, you, optimization has a price. So if you would move your workloads from cloud provider A to cloud provider B because the cloud provider B gives you a slightly better offer, how much you would pay for that on traffic? And so... Yeah, ma many don't realize, but, you know, uh, I'm sure that our audience is cloud savvy, but in case we have some beginners, the traffic uh, moving in out the cloud actually moving uh, out of the cloud correct the in is mm -hmm. usually for free but moving out of the cloud the data goes out of the cloud uh, costs money so if you have like uh, a hybrid uh, or a multi-cloud type of architecture where some of the workloads in one cloud some of the workloads in another cloud you need to take into account also that the traffic goes out from each one of the clouds exactly the other, so right? There are so if you if we're talking today in the age of the of the containers of the Kubernetes of the of the new and cool and edgy, the technological the technology enables going multi-cloud as one batch. The to have that operating in an optimal efficiency requires very highly sophisticated algorithmic approach with the fact that on a day-to-day -day basis cloud providers change and reduce prices so the reality that was true yesterday they it, it would have to be true today and every little percent here and there completely reshuffles the math 
So you cannot rely on companies that use historical data to make that decision. The, if you are working with a company that says that they can multi, do a multi-cloud management single place, all their data, all their pricing, all, everything, utilization, pricing, offerings, cannot come from the cloud provider itself because it's very funny, but the native cloud provider's tools, all of them, have an up to 72 hour delay on on providing you with your actual usage wow that's meaningful so yeah. if you are talking about that kind of a solution that kind of a solution will have to use a completely unique di data source unlike anyone used today by the i would say the vast majority of the companies who provide a finops tool Correct. It's actually, if you do the analogy, it's almost like investing in the stock market based on historical exactly. data, correct? You could you could extract some wisdom out of that, but you really want the, the up-to-date, uh, what happened on the second, I'll correct? take that example and, and spin it and spin a, a sprinkle in Israeli flavor into that. It's like listening to ways three days ago. Okay, okay. That's a better one. I think it's not Israeli. Ways right by now is uh, is worldwide. Everyone using that, and it's also painful. So people could uh, relate to that emotionally. If you do the ways of uh, three days ago, it's not helpful helpful for you today. That's interesting. So when we're talking about uh, optimizing various types of uh, resources in the cloud, so I think one of the first one was related to all kind of FinOps dealing with uh, spot instances. Mm -hmm. Correct. So. Uh, because a spot could be taken out of you, I don't know, in a matter of a minute to five now, I guess. Uh, so there are solutions that were optimizing all kind of moving you in between spots, in between regions and so to ensure that uh, it's not being taken out of you or or you still could, you know, yes. rely on that, correct? But but now uh, there are others, you know, I, I, I heard that there are you know, all kind of optimizations on the storage level, um, all kind of optimizations on... on um, on, uh, on on other types of uh, uh, compute instances uh, uh, solutions, exactly. correct? Could you elaborate Perfect. on so that, please? At the end of the day, if we'll take all the all the layers that are built on top, if we look at the underlying layers, you have basically three layers. You have your compute layer, you have your storage layer, and you have your net traffic layer. Those are this is basically it. <coughs> yeah, the stop. The key here, right, and this is, it's, it's extremely simple. The key here is to maximize everything that you are paying for. That, 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 let's start with the basics. If your disk is at a 95% utilization or 90% utilization, 24 seven, and you're using the latest disk, you're a winner. If you're using a slightly older version, you're a winner. Far from, it's, it's far from reality. Same goes with compute. You have spikes in usage, you have steady state usage, you have different applications consuming that compute. You have databases and you have demand that is changing, fluctuating based on your customer usage. You have a specific parts of application that just run for a period of time. So the goal is, is quite simple, is to understand how you utilize that resource with the, with the most applicable offering. For example, if you have, uh, if you have designed an algorithm that will trade on your behalf in the stock in the stock market or a database there is no way you can afford to have even a slightest probability of a downtime so having a, having that application run on spot instances puts your risk puts your application puts your business at risk so the reward of the 70% discount is not worth it. 
On the other hand, if you have an application that people can restart and it can reboot itself and it will not take 20 seconds, it will take 25 seconds, do that. You should use spot instances. It's low risk, high reward, worth the while. And by actually learning all the offerings and all the possible ways that the cloud offers along with how your company or how each and every department within the company or how each and every product within the company uses the cloud, you should tailor me, you should tailor the perfect solution, the most cost efficient solution for your application. Correct. So actually you're talking about there is a workload, you need to fit to that the most uh, suitable resource, not too big, not too small, and, and actually keep doing that over exactly. time because the workload itself could go, you know, could need less resources or more resources, and then you need either to scale it out in or up yeah. down, correct, or I'll, move it in I'll, between I'll different resources. An, I'll, I'll add something more to that. So we see with a lot of SaaS companies because every time you have a new customer, a new product, a new feature, that's a new business request. So your application behaves differently and you cannot set in stone a certain rules.
accessibility to your customers. Recently, I would say what last week, there was a crash of one of the applications and half of the internet went blind. So if, you're, if you are selling shoes, you lost a customer. If you are an algo trading, if you are selling high speed, high, if you're, if you're a bank, you cannot, you cannot allow it. You cannot, there is no way. So you need to yeah. spread yeah. or reduce risk by spreading your application or minimizing the risk by spreading your application as, 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 as smart as possible. Yeah, so you're referring to multi-cloud for recovery. disaster recovery. It can action, be cost optimization, correct? it can be efficiency, it can be a lot of things. It can be technological advantages okay. as well. Okay. Okay, so you believe that the future is in multi-cloud and I guess there are lots of meat for cloud FinOps to bite into the multi-cloud uh, efficiencies, correct? Okay. That's fascinating and that's great. So, Maxim, I would like to thank you for a very enlightening session. Uh, you are a true cloud rainmaker and this is the Cloud Rainmakers uh, podcast. So uh, stay with us for the next chapters. Uh, if you have any questions, feedbacks, comments, or anything you would like to hear in one of the next chapters, please email to cloud at amdocs.com. Thank you very much, Maxim. I really learned a lot. Thank and, you very uh, much, Zev. Keep in touch. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.